Welcome to part 32 of the Basic Training Booster Pass Edition. Today we're going to cover everything you need to know to play Singapore Speedway on 150cc. The recommended build for this course is going to be Rosalina, Teddy Buggy, Rollers, and Paper Glider. We're going to use a mushroom as soon as the run begins by holding down the item button during the countdown, and then after that it's a series of alternating mini turbos from right to left to right. After that we're going to do a left hop into a right drift and just hold wide until you get the mini turbo. Finally, left hop into left drift to grab the two coins and build up a super mini turbo before the cannon glider. If all this is too much, or if you're having a hard time getting all the mini turbos, then just drive straight and save yourself the headaches, though do note that you still want to do the last mini turbo. In either case, the glider coming up here is a cannon glider, so you can save yourself a tenth of a second or so by jumping on top of it to make your glider come out more quickly. Then just start holding your joystick in a 7 o'clock position. Land in a wide left drift and trick off the white part of this platform here, landing in another wide left drift. Now don't release that until you know you're going to be able to grab the coin, and then when you get the mini turbo, right hop to release. You want to do another wide left drift to grab the third coin up here before going off the glider, but it's very important not to start that left drift right away. The problem is that this pool surface is angled a bit, and if you try and start the left drift too early, you're likely to end up not getting that drift and instead start a right drift. And let me tell you, this is probably one of the most annoying ways that you can lose runs on this track. Now after going off the glider, go through all the rings and then make sure to try and land a little bit early so that you can land in a left drift. The reason is that we're going to want to buy as much time as possible to build up an ultra mini turbo around this turn, and we need to do it as early as possible. So we're going to tighten our drift as much as we can before grabbing the two coins, and then widen up after grabbing the two coins until we get the UMT. The reason we want this early is that we're going to do the snake drifting stuff that we did on lap 1, starting with two right hops into a left drift, then a right drift, and another left drift. And it's this left drift in particular that's important. If you get any air time at all when going down this hill, then just stop snaking and drive straight, because otherwise when you try and start the next right drift, you're going to run straight into the tree that's right in front of you. And even if you survive that, the next two drifts are set up to take you through this gap in between the next two planters, and that's definitely not happening if you miss the timing on that third drift that we just talked about. Once you make it through those two planters, do a right hop into a final left drift to finish up this straightaway, and then follow it up with a right drift into a mini turbo before the market section. We're going to build up an ultra mini turbo around this series of right turns, and then we're going to intentionally bonk the wall to stabilize our line while allowing us to build up a super mini turbo. When I say stabilize the line, what I mean is that hitting the wall allows us to come out of the super mini turbo by doing two right hops before starting a right drift, which will allow us to build up yet another super mini turbo, which wouldn't be possible if we just tried to SMT straight through that left turn. Now for one of the most counterintuitive strategies in the run, after getting the SMT, do a left drift and mushroom through the grass, releasing the mini turbo after the mushroom boost runs out. We're finally on to section 3 after this, and for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. The green conveyor belts here move you forward, so make sure to take them, and then when you get to the stairs, left hop before tricking off the top of them to get a better line around the long left turn here. We're going to build up two mini turbos and then left trick off the stairs on the other side of this turn. If you've got good soft drifting, then you can get a super mini turbo and do some glider vectoring, but otherwise just do it with an MT. Then you want to land on the back edge of the middle ramp so that you can get boosted up a bit while keeping your glider out. Once again, going through the rings to get a little boost each time. When landing from the glider, you want to trick as far to the right of the track as you can while holding right, and then do another right hop before tricking off the orange boost ramp. This will allow you to get a couple of extra mini turbos before going back into the market section, which plays just like it did on lap 2, except that when we get the super mini turbo after coming out of the market, we're going to left hop into left drift so that we can build up a mini turbo, jump over the first part of the grass on the left, and then mushroom through the rest. Now that's it for the strats that I use in my current personal best, let's talk about the world record a bit. The main difference is that they do motion glider on all three of the glider ramps. It saves an ass load of time, but I'm pretty much morally opposed to motion glider just on principle. They also build up more mini turbos and higher levels of mini turbo in a lot of places. For example, a super mini turbo instead of a regular mini turbo before the market on section 2. And an additional mini turbo trick before the final glider. There's a lot of little details like this that I'm not going to cover in this video, but if you watch the world record, it'll be fairly obvious when you compare it to my run, so you can always check that out in the game if you'd like. And that's it for the strat, so let's talk about the track a bit more while checking out my current personal best. And as always, if you found the video helpful, please don't forget to drop a like and a comment since this not only lets me know that you're enjoying my content, but it also helps it increase its reach in the algorithm which really helps out the channel. Thank you very much for that. Now, Singapore Speedway. I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for this one, and I promise that I'm not just being contrarian to piss people off, but I genuinely don't get the appeal of this track. Now hold on, 
Obviously, the track looks amazing, and its soundtrack is one of the most hype in the game. I mean, why else would I have used it in my most recent Mario Kart Data Science video to highlight the money shot? But the track itself is just... Okay, look, it's not necessarily boring track design, but I just really hate snake drifting in general. And the fact that you have to do it with Rosalie and a Teddy, which is literally the lowest mini turbo meta build that we have right now, just really irks me. I mentioned that I lost a lot of runs in the angled pool section, but I lost way more due to just not building up mini turbos when I thought I was going to. Most of the time this happened on lap one, which you'd think is a good thing since it means the runs would end early. But all this means is that on the rare occasion in which I actually did make it to lap two, I'd lose even more runs due to the snaking there. I guess the point here is that there isn't anything that's actually very hard or tricky about the course in the sense that it's very easy to figure out what you need to do, but actually doing it requires a lot of precise inputs that just make it feel more like a chore than anything else. This stands in stark contrast to a course like Yoshi's Island, which is the epitome of how the hell am I supposed to actually do this, which is something that, I don't know why, just motivates me way more. Now, let me be clear here. I want to say again, I don't think Singapore Speedway is a badly designed course or anything. It's just that in terms of the things that I find enjoyable about Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, I personally don't find very much in this track that keeps me interested. But if you think I'm being off base here, definitely let me know down in the comments, because the one thing I do love is chatting with you all about the game. And that's everything you need to know to play Singapore Speedway on 150cc. If you found the video helpful, don't forget to subscribe before you go, since even though there aren't any more basic training videos coming out for Wave 4, I've got a lot of awesome content planned that you definitely don't want to miss. Thank you all very much for taking the time out of your day to do some basic training, and as always, I will see you in the next video.